Dogs and blast beats <laughs> for another week. The nerdiest podcast that ever there was. The coolest of the uncool. Every week, uh, just three massive nerds getting together it's just to talk about random and weird topics, as is today's topic. I'm pretty excited for today one. But I am one of your hosts, Joshua Redbeard. I am another one of your hosts. I'm Margie. And I'm Face. Grant. And <laughs> you cut me off. I'm Grant and Sorry, I have what? COVID. Did you, say, did you say I cut you off, Grant? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Grant is on the on, is on the COVID train. I had it. Now it's yep. his turn. First uh, time. It's been it's been you know nearly three years clean, but it finally got me, and it fucking it sucks. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so va- if you're not vaccinated, you're a fucking idiot. <laughs> so that's been my um my nerdiest thing this week has definitely been having COVID. And that sucked, but also it's given me heaps of free time to smash out the new Pokemon game, which is it's good. Nice. It's good fun. Like it has, as everyone's heard, it's got performance issues, but the game itself is probably one of the better ones that's come out in in years and years. Probably, probably my favorite one since X and Y. So that's that's a long time. What are you ago. What are you playing it on? Uh, Switch. I think it's only on Switch. So as someone that hasn't played a Pokemon game since Pokemon Red, Same. Is, how, <laughs> how have they changed the storyline now? Like, are you still like a young kid who gets a start of Pokemon and then you go out and got to catch them all? Or is there like some sort of like more in-depth storyline? Uh, so they have, this one's got three separate things you can do. In So first of all, like, yeah, like you're, you're, you're a kid, get the Pokemon, pick a starter, like basic stuff still happens, but... Um, you can do the gyms technically in any order. Like you can go to anyone at any time. It's an open world now. Nice. Uh, so you've got you've got eight gyms. Uh, you've got how many kind of... how many jacks? <laughs> 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 then you got um, you got the the Titan trials. So there's like five Titans that you have to beat, which gives like your Pokemon that you travel around on. Like it's like basically unlocks your fly. Um, climb and dash and all that surf sick and then you've got there's the five um kind of like team rocket bases that are around the map but they're not team rocket but yeah and they're all different types so you got essentially it's it's kind of like having like what like 15, uh, 18 gyms instead of eight so it's it's cool. Like it's and the elite four is different as well. You got to do like a champion assessment where you have to actually do a quiz at the start, and mm-hmm. then you verse the elite four. But That's if you cool. fail the if you fail the quiz, you'd like they don't even let you in to fight the elite four. It's weird. And then you can <laughs> verse the champion. So it's you know it's like and then once you've finished it, you can actually go back around and do all the gyms again, and they're all higher level with new Pokemon. So like there's. It's a bit different, but like it's but still the basic form. What what is your starting Pokemon of choice? Um, I picked Quaxley, and I immediately regret it because it's fuck. Is that the one with the leak? Yeah, no, that that's no. They're they're new starter Pokemon, so oh. it's kind of it's kind of like it kind of looks like it was going to be like an Elvis Duck. I'm like, oh, it's fun. Let's do that. <laughs> Um, yeah. so, I was, so I was going to call him Elvis Quaxley, but yeah, just the second one just kind of looked like a lame ass john travolta i'm like um i'm Aww. gonna go just get a raichu or something cooler yeah <laughs> raichu raichus are so fucking cool yeah. honestly but like the, there was uh, there's honestly like the the pokemon they picked for the game like they picked pretty good ones like they obviously they don't have all the pokemon because you just can't do it anymore because there's thousands of them you can't catch them all you know what they should just cut out some of the later generations that are shit <laughs> well that that's what they've done so like they've got like kind of like a lot of the the ones that everyone likes from all the generations yeah. so it was pretty good like one of the better pokemon games they've had in years but yeah there is it it does look a bit like counter strike sometimes like this the way that they've got the skins like the 2d um <laughs> over, like overlays on everything look pretty bad <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. it has its pitfalls how about hey. how about you margie what's the nerdiest thing you've done this week did we introduce that? I don't think we did. Oh, yeah. If you were new to the show, we always start off by talking about our nerdiest things. And Graham no, was like, I'm just, I'm a fucking COVID. Uh. <laughs> it's all right. I, I, said, I said my nerdiest thing. I said yeah, it was Pokemans. That's, well, that's, no, Pokemans. Um, 
fuck me. Look, I am a time poor as it gets. I get zero spare time. But uh, so like I don't have time to fucking read or like watch anything at the moment. But uh, I did have time to go be a fucking massive nerd over Gajira. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, Grant. I'm sorry. Grant had tickets, but couldn't couldn't they go? And Josh was at Josh was at good things and was being a farm boy dad on the side stage, there is iconic. There is an iconic photo of Josh wearing overalls, filming a band from side of stage. Pale dusk, or is that I, I can't remember. What yeah, it was it was, yeah. it was pale dusk. There's, there's a great video of yeah of me like it's, with like yeah hold, holding the the vocalist to be like because people call me and she's like why weren't you watching the show? Like, the vocalist asked me to film the whole set on his phone, and so I was like I had his phone and I'm filming the whole set. But yeah, so, someone's like zoomed in on me as I'm like like rocking out like a dad, and it like hits a breakdown. You just see my head just like, like it's, yeah. it was a whole thing. <laughs> the phone's gyrating. Uh, yeah, so I had tickets to the side show. Sorry, Grant, um, and I showed up straight from having run an all day work event because as an admin person, apparently I just do shit like organize stuff which is great I love it like I'm very pragmatic sometimes not with my life but like (laughs) with other stuff anyway so I went straight from running that to the work staff party which I was also running (laughs) to Gajira and I just smashed two very fruity cocktails which had orchid flowers in them and so my bladder was like fucking size of a bowling ball but it was really close to when Gajira started and I didn't want to miss a second of their set so I just fucking stood pigeon toed the whole time (laughs) headbanging <laughs> um and it was so good except like i forgot how much metalheads fart when they're at shows like y'all have like i think someone shat themselves in front of me because it was bad <laughs> and then it was so bad that like i had to move because i thought i was like about to sl- oh anyway poo um anyway uh but i don't blame them because i was kind of shitting myself with excitement i'm not gonna lie i cried when they started playing and i would die for the duplantier brothers because their jeans are so good i spent the whole time just making inappropriate comments about mario and <laughs> the, the drummer from my one of my band's plovers was with me and he idolizes mario and was because he thinks he is such like a good drummer and then i was just there like "Mm, yeah yeah, he can get it and he's like shut up Margie." um (laughs) and then and then i was broken after that gig and giant day and my body was like crippled and then my mate was like shout out to my mate cam from captives uh wearing one of their shirts right now (laughs) um who was like hey my girlfriend's sick do you want to do a free ticket to good things and i was like yes Yes, I do. So um, I got to see them again. Like I literally sprinted from where I got dropped off down to the gates so that I didn't miss a second of Gajira. No cardio (laughs) unless it's for a good band. Anyway, and it made me realize that I fucking hate day festivals because they're just (laughs) so hot. And there's so many youths. Um, And like I was right up the front for Deftones and now I have a rash over like half my body because I got (laughs) sweated on so much. There was a girl on someone's shoulders in front of me and there was a hole in her bodysuit right over her beep. Um, and I could see everything. And she was jumping up and down like two centimeters from my face. And I was like, oh, God. Um, and there were, yeah, and there were a lot of youths. But it was kind of nice because I was like, I remember being this excited for Soundwave when I was 15. And I remember getting up on people's shoulders without holes in my pants. And yeah. But anyway, I got to see Gajira tri- twice. That was fucking sick. Got to see Deftones, Chino, still hot. Like, mm. you know life is life is not not that bad uh <laughs> that was that was very good <laughs> very good uh anyway that's my uh rendition josh josh how do you I know mean, it out uh, no you weren't well, doing it over gajira because you weren't there i wasn't doing it over gajira i wasn't i wasn't uh so i got to I, I have an honorable mention and then i have my uh my main one so the honorable mention has to go uh to the Mistborn series, I uh, I decided I wanted to just kind of start from the start with Brandon Is Sanderson. That the, so yeah, I, that's the Brandon Sanderson one. Yeah, I've heard yeah. really good things. Yeah, so I picked up the the Final Empire, like the first book in the the Mistborn series, and it's really really good. Like the like the way he kind of creates. Uh, I think I think Muggy may have touched upon it recently in uh, the Magic episode we did, but the way that they kind of present magic is like you know the the without going into too much detail if you haven't read the books it's basically like there you know there's uh different metals that you can have inside your body and you can kind of recognize which one's which and if you burn this it does this and if you burn this it does this and it's like it's really really do you get interesting 
Like if, if you, you don't burn it off, you do get sick, but you says why you only like ingest like little bits of metal at a time. Oh, you it's eat like, the metal on purpose. I thought you meant like you were burning off your zinc and I was like, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, so you, gotta stop working. yeah, so you like, you drink this stuff that has like all the different metals in it. And then yeah, you kind of like, you can, you can feel the different ones inside of you. So you can burn this and I'll do this oh, and you can burn this and I'll do that. Sick. And yeah, the the dynamics of it are brilliant. Like they're really, really freaking good. But yeah, the whole idea of the mistborns is like like most people only can burn one kind of metal, but the mistborns can burn all of the kinds of metal. And then there's like like higher mythical ones that they're trying to get. It's it. Yeah, I'm I'm like halfway through it, but it is a really really good book. So that's that, that's my honorable mention. Oh, side um, note: in one of the books that I'm in the book series, I am reading someone actually does that because you know they can all I was telling you about how they can all manipulate earth and he gets mm. poisoned and he can sense it in him and he like b- bends it out of himself and like vomits it up and then like <laughs> takes it all out of his bloodstream and ejects it from himself and it's so cool and gross but anyway so that's that's really fucking cool <laughs> nice Nice. But yeah, my, my main one this week, I, um, I, I, when Grant said he had COVID, I sent this, I sent it over early cause I was just kind of like, <laughs> you can check this out cause this is great. But, um, I put the call out the other day to, to find some new podcasts and I was just kind of like, you know, hit me up with a whole bunch of podcasts. You know, what have you got? And a whole bunch of friends said there are a whole bunch of different ones. And there's some really, really cool ones in there that I've got to get through. Did um, anyone recommend Balrogs and Blast Beats? <laughs> <laughs> a couple of people did. A couple of people, it, was, it was obvious that they listened to Balrogs and Blast Beats. Um, but uh, one that uh, a friend sent me was this guy called Lex Friedman. And I, I looked into Lex Friedman and I had a quick kind of like scan through his guests. And to me, my, my first judgment, just looking at his guests without actually listening to anything was he, he seems like the, the science nerd equivalent of Joe Rogan. Like he's a, he's an, <laughs> he's an MIT, uh, he's a specialist in like, uh, AI and stuff like that. He has some questionable guests. He had like Jordan Peterson on there. He had fucking, uh, Kanye West on there recently. Not since he's got, I know, was, <laughs> when, when he was bad, but now he's like recently before the Alex Jones interview kind of thing. Um, but like Joe Rogan, he has some really interesting people on there too. And I found his episode with Todd Howard and Todd Howard, obviously the you know head of Bethesda in charge of oh. Fallout, in charge of Skyrim, in charge of uh, fucking the new game Star Wars coming out. Um, and his chat with Todd Howard is fucking incredible talking about like it goes back through Todd's entire career and how he like when he first started Bethesda how he got into it and then like how they develop these games and how they kind of they they view the AI and like one of my favorite parts about it was when he was talking to um Todd about how they do the the bad guy like the the enemy AI in games and Todd admits they actually like severely dumbed down the AI. He's like, he's like, we have to make it really dumb because we've made it slightly smart, smarter and it's just not a fun experience because the AI <laughs> is that good that even like a mid-level AI just dominates over the human player. So he's like, he actually admits, he's like, we have to severely dumb it down. The robots even, are going to take over. Holy shit. <laughs> even to the point he was saying, like they, the, when they originally like set up dungeons and they decided to, to let the um the enemies be able to pick up weapons so if like if you killed one that had a better weapon than the the one that's still alive he would pick up the better weapon and keep fighting with you but the ai they didn't program it properly and the ai went to the chests where like you know at the end of it you get the special thing you kill him and you open the chest and then you get the thing the ai gets a treat yeah, the AI just went to the chest and got the special weapon that was just dominating. So they had to rewrite the code so the AI could only pick up things that have been dropped by other. It was really, really, but it's a really, really great chat. And now I've gone on uh, to fucking motherfuck. What's his name? Um, that yeah, I, I know that guy. Yeah, yeah, that one. Of um, course, the, he's the head of id software. I'm gonna. I had to like scroll down. Oh, yeah, Bill Mark. Gates. It's I know what you're talking about. Okay. We talked about him last week. <laughs> well um, uh, John McCoy, yeah, John Carmax, and yeah, not not um, not the guy we talked about last week. Uh, this is another guy, like John the, Carmack, the guy who like, found ID. Yeah, the guy that founded ID Software, mm. um, and he's like the lead programmer in a whole bunch of games. But yeah, his his episode goes for I think five hours or something like that. 
<laughs> like one of the first questions, because Lex is obviously like he's a computer programmer as well. So he asks John Carmack what's his favorite programming language. And like half an hour later, he's still going on about why his favorite <laughs> programming language is C++. And it's <laughs> it's amazing. But um, yeah, so, so it's the same kind of stuff. Um, Yeah, he has some really, really interesting guests. And so, yeah. Shaz Alex Freeman, like I said, you know, it's the same thing I do with Joe Rogan. Like I don't listen to all the Joe Rogan stuff. There's some stuff that he just should just shut the fuck up about. But mm. like when he talks like Rob Zombie and when he talks to like Quentin Tarantino, when he talks to Killer Mike, like those are chats that I want to hear. And yeah. so I think I'm going to do the same thing with Alex Friedman podcast. Yeah, it's a weird one because you feel like probably a lot of the weirder questions and cooler places he goes to with, you know, obviously the guests that we like, he probably wouldn't do if he didn't also – talk to everyone about weird shit all the time mm. it's like it's kind of a catch-22 yeah it's that's yeah. one of the things like I, I like i yeah i agree that like joe should shut up on a lot of fucking topics but i think like whenever anyone's like oh who are the four people that you would have to a dinner party i always choose like fucking like three really amazing minds but then joe because joe's an amazing interviewer he asks really really good questions no one answer that question because that's a really good thing for us to talk about on another yeah, we're gonna episode. talk about that on another episode but he, he, would, be, <laughs> he would be one of my four Stolen. specifically because he is an amazing interviewer and like the other people that i would choose i would be just too like <sighs> and I wouldn't be able to speak. So Joe would you ask questions. You know what I do? I would, I I would pre-write questions and have them, have them on cards. <laughs> or, I'd get, or I'd get inappropriately drunk and be like, did you know? And they'll be like, oh, fuck. Like, do you want to see my nipple piercing? <laughs> no, no, I don't. Please. Exactly. exactly. Do you want to see a picture so of my that, cat? <laughs> <laughs> so that's my nerdiest thing uh, for this week. And uh, as we move into the medium beat, we had we had uh, we had a medium beat, but Margie has made us change it to show and tell. And I specifically have to take show and tell for this episode. Yes. Um, because <laughs> if, you, if you're watching on YouTube, then this is going to be a lot more interesting than if you're watching on uh, the podcast right now. But if, I just <laughs> if you're watching on the podcast, and you see over there, there's like. There's a little dog bed. It should have a dog in it. <laughs> Drum it's really roll. Comfy one. But instead, he's like hanging out down here ah, on the floor. So being a little idiot <laughs> right now. His head is like inches from some very, very expensive. Pick him up, 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 pick him up. Nah, he's snoozing. And if I if I wake him up, then he'll bite my hand real bad. He's mouthing at the moment, but he is a <laughs> he is a booable is the breed name. It is a oh, is what a, is that? The South African Mastiff. It was the Mastiffs that like the Dutch bought over to keep lions away. So these dogs are huge. Like like fully grown, he'll be about 80 kilograms. He's already like he's 10 weeks old. He's already bigger than a staffy. He weighs. I was gonna about say he looks like he doesn't look much smaller than Chucky. No, yeah. He's, his, he I think his paws are Chucky. bigger than my hands. Yeah, um, his paws are massive. He's he's gonna be a very, very big boy. And I'm oh, very and if excited. any if any listeners are like, Oh, this is fucking shit. I like what? Um, we we will post something on the Instagram <laughs> because I will make Josh because this dog <laughs> is so cute and everything it does is so cute and its paws are so big. And what's his name? His name is uh, we can we like when people get big dogs like this, they always name them like Hulk or like Maximus, or like something tough. And I was like, well, he's going to be a pretty Tiny. imposing dog. So I, I, I took a page out of fucking uh, get him to the Greek. You know, everyone's like, you know, you call it a Jeffrey because who could be afraid of a Jeffrey? We called him. <laughs> We've called him Dudley because who could be afraid of a Dudley? <laughs> Dudley Dursley, <laughs> ultimate villain. <laughs> oh my god, Dudley's so good. Yeah, D- Dudley's the best name for such a big dog. I like, yeah, went through, uh, yeah, a, a whole bunch of names and just kind of, yeah, we kept on coming back to Dudley. And I was like, oh, like Otis was like a close second, but even then, I was like, nah, like Dudley's just it just works. <laughs> Dudley's it just absolutely so works cute. for a dog. And but, how old uh, is he? He's ten weeks old, so he's he is actually a, a puppy, puppy, puppy. So he must have come yeah. out of the womb like the size of a football, mm, pretty much. But he he just grows so fast, like literally, because it's like put a deposit on him one week and then left him for that week because we had like we had fucking good things festival and everything else. We picked him up the yeah. day after good things, and I swear in that week he'd grown like two or three more kilograms. Like he's just going to be big. Like by the time they're like 11 month old, they're fully grown. So he's going to get from 12 kilograms to 80 kilograms in the next nine months. He's um, going to do a lot of eating. Mm, yeah. He, he is going to eat a lot. They, yeah, the, and a the lot of pooping. 
wild. <laughs> that, the thing that you've that got a, a lot of collectibles a... within reaching distance. Yeah. So where, where do you where do you get fresh lion meat from in Melbourne's <laughs> inner north? <laughs> what I'm going to go on the hunt and find while he's on the puppy stuff right now. But yeah, eventually I have to get him some you know some fresh game, some uh, yeah some zebra, <laughs> some lion. We'll just we'll see what else we can find yeah. out there. Neighborhood neighborhood Giraffe. cats. <laughs> is is well, that my... going to be a thing? <laughs> like... I mean, my last my last massive Rudy is about half the size of what Dudley would be. And Rudy would eat bones like like foot long bones that were like massive and he would destroy them in like half a day. So yeah. So your Dudley's dog could gonna... eat me. Pretty much. Pretty much. Sit. He will uh he will eat a lot. <laughs> I'm I am very excited. Welcome to the Balrogs and Blast Beats and Northside Nerds family, Dudley. We are yeah, happy Dudley. to have you. Um would if anyone would like Northside Nerds merch with Dudley's face on it. Please let us know because he is so cute. <laughs> and if anyone could Photoshop Dudley into everything, um, just mm. everything. That's that's yeah. all I care about. Everything. Yeah, it'll be he'll be all over. Yeah, my Instagram and I'm sure the Northside Nerds Instagram because Marky is going to make me do it. I'm sure. And you hear that, you, Chucky? And- you're retired. Sorry, oh, mate. Hey, oh, Chucky, Chucky. Not, not it anymore. Chucky got called out the other day on the, the <laughs> Northside Nerds TikTok where we were asking about, uh, would you rather a, a third arm or an eye in the back of your head? And while we were asking that question, Chucky's like grinding his butt on the carpet. On the car hey, he was doing donuts. He was chasing his tail. He did both. <laughs> <laughs> he chased yeah, his so tail and then rubbed his ass on the carpet. Yeah. Someone called Grant out. Be like, if, if Grant had the third eye, he would have seen Chucky being a menace. I was like, that's true. <laughs> That is I can true. Watch, watch Dudley right now and make sure he's not eating my vinyl test press. Well, if Dudley wakes up, we might have to put him on the microphone. So that's why the uh, <laughs> that's why the show and tell was so necessary this week. Because <laughs> I I am going to be a pain, man. I would love a dog, but my cat fights dogs, and she is not good at fighting. Uh, <laughs> says all the vet bills that I've paid over the years. <laughs> what um, a dick. <laughs> uh, pets, you got to love them, and then they cost you a lot of money. Uh, yeah, yep. yeah, just just a little bit. <laughs> oh man! But Margie, um, it is it is time to get into the the main beat for this week, and you, you've oh, chosen geez. the topic, and you you seem very excited about this one. So, would you like to lead us off on this one? Yeah, this week we are talking about uh, dystopian dynamics, uh, because I read a lot of sci fi, and you know, it's just dystopias are just sci-fi like let's be real like the backbone of sci-fi so um i thought it'd be fun to talk about because like there are so many games tv shows movies books that are all based in some kind of future where there's some dystopian elements of it uh especially star troopers (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Especially Starship Troopers. Um, so I have stolen a wonderful definition from the internet. Um, it's talking about dystopian literature, but um, I feel like we can expand it. Um, hmm. Where dystopias are, or dystopian literature is a form of speculative fiction that offers a vision of the future. They are societies in cataclysmic decline with characters who battle environmental ruin, technological control, government oppression um dystopian novels um often have a didactic message with themes about like anarchism oppression mass poverty rebellion like there's always psychological elements it's great um and margaret atwood who of course wrote the handmaid's tale um so she's uh she knows dystopian fiction saw the genre as a way into the future So if you're interested in writing speculative fiction, one way to generate a plot is to take an idea from current society and move it a little further down the road. So even if humans are short-term thinkers, fiction can anticipate and extrapolate into multiple versions of the future. And I love that. I love that dystopia is something that we see in our current society and that's what makes it so scary and so relatable. It's some some elements of what we live that's there. And... Mm -hmm. um, um and a dyst- and this one's nice a dystopia is an imagined community or society that is dehumanizing and frightening um <laughs> it's the antonym of utopia which is a perfect society so yeah. um yeah, yeah so but the, but the, that definition as well like i was i i thought it was just interesting like the uh the the etymology behind it is yes yeah, there's the dis is the the greek word for bad or hard and then topia is place so it literally means a bad place or a hard place yeah exactly <laughs> so it's uh yeah it's just it's so interesting like when you say dystopia like what's the first thing that comes to mind 
Like what 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 example comes to your head immediately? Judge Dredd for me. Yeah, I was gonna say, yeah, Judge Dredd, Blade Runner, all that kind Fallout? of stuff. Fallout? Is that a dystopia? Fallout's a hundred percent a dystopia. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, like, yeah, pretty much all that all those post apocalyptic stuff, I guess you yeah, that's all dystopias, isn't it? Really? Yeah, just, absolutely. Yeah, next level dystopia. <laughs> like so yeah, because I think there's definitely some like generic hallmarks of a dystopia mm. um like a dystopian setting that we can well i would I, say the dystopian setting is actually but was penciled by jean girard also known as mobius so he essentially he did he do the meant, mobius strip no he didn't no. <laughs> but i he mean did. he probably did for his wife but that's yeah. a <laughs> Right. Sorry, Grant. Continue, please. <laughs> he uh, he did invent basically the city skyline as we know it for all them. He did all the set design for like, like he helps with Star Wars. He did Mad Max, Alien, Blade Runner. He ba- essentially like the, the future city with the towers with people packed into them, multi layers. Like that's that's all from his his ideas. Like he he basically pioneered that artistic vision of like cyberpunk dystopian future that's, that's sick awesome. where, where did Real he pioneer bit. that in i uh, drew it oh, originally, oh yeah he drew it yeah originally he drew it and then he was asked to uh he was like a set designer on uh blade ah. runner alien um he also worked on star wars and mad max but he's also that's he ha- helped with the uh, nausicaa valley of the wind and also akira so that was pretty cool <gasps> oh that's really cool like yeah, that's very, very cool. Sorry, not um, helped, but um, they were inspired by him, so. Yeah, damn. I like that there's, like, an influential person um, that's there, like, someone. Um, yeah, who... I just quickly Googled his art, and his art is incredible. Yeah, he did Um, like, he did a Sandman for Neil Gaiman as well. Yeah. Ooh. For a couple of trades, I think, or at least a trade. Damn. Yeah. That's very, very cool. I, um... I'm obviously like the book nerd in the <laughs> in the <laughs> podcast, um, and like so, I I've I've got together some of my favorite uh, dystopias that are in literature. Um, oh, yeah. Most of them are pretty classic, like you know, but there's reasons why. But like I like because the current I'm currently reading um, the Broken Earth trilogy. I'm onto the last book, which I read. In all my spare time um it's like it's very it, it's a very post-apocalyptic concept but i like that it's not like this hyper futuristic sort of dystopia that's often explored or it's not like i mean there is like an oppressive government but it's a bit less like totalitarian regime because like the population's so thin um so what's happened is that in the past um like some giant cataclysmic event like seismic events have happened and pretty much they're just on like one kind of continent they don't know there could be more people out there there's no electricity or if there is it's like you know by generators and stuff like that you know there's no like networks and grids and all of that that's built so it's like and there's constant um like geoseismic activity around which is really terrifying so there's always earthquakes and all of this kind of stuff and um Every so many years, there's a fifth season, which is brought on by one of these geoseismic sort of events or something related to it. And it's like post-apocalyptic. So like there's been like fungus seasons and there's been like, uh, they call it the season of the teeth where they ran out of meat and people will eat each other. Um, but like, it's, it's really, (laughs) and so some, some of them, they're like, you know, there was no, there was no sunshine for 15 years and you're like, what the fuck? Like, so they all live in like comms and everyone has assigned roles. Like you're a breeder or you're a strong back or you're a leader or you're an innovator. And that is your role in the community. And like, um, you know, you, you can't just go up and join a comm. You have to like prove your worth to them and be accepted into it. And it's, um, and humans have developed an extra organ as well called a sesapine, which is like in the base of your skull, like at the top of your spinal column and where you can like sense when earthquakes and seismic activity are coming because it's become such a necessity to survive in this world that it's something that's evolved. And it's like, and it's set like freakishly in the future. I think it's set like 40,000 years in the future or something. Like it's a very far future. So it's nice. like, it's really cool. Like, um, so I really like that it's different from other 
sort of dystopias but it is like terrifying because like the people who can manipulate the earth are like hated for being different and there's like a lot of savagery and lots of people fighting each other and you know your standard (laughs) lord of the fry lord of the fries (laughs) Lord of the Flies. Mm. Not, not a sponsor, not a sponsor, but delicious but if, nonetheless. But if they would like to sponsor us, yeah, mm. thanks. We thanks. wouldn't say no. But it's it's interesting how often like that concept in you know in the future because I think it is such a possibility that society will get to the point where you are born into a role. Like because you, when you talk about like forty thousand years in the future, my brain's automatically like, well, Warhammer is said forty thousand years in the future. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Right. But, and that's the same sort of thing as like you are born into roles in a lot of that society and you never move out. Like it is very much a caste system, which is ironic considering that's like, that is an old thing from like the past, most of the world, some places caste systems still exist, but yeah, a lot of dystopians seem to think that we're going to go back to a caste system at some point in time. And it's, yeah, it's kind of creepy that that's like a hundred percent, a very, very real possibility. I mean, like the caste system absolutely still exists. Like it exists in, Mm. Some Indian cultures, I know that there is a caste system, which I won't go into because I'm not an expert on it, but like it does exist. <laughs> like, yeah. And yeah. like there is, in a way, a financial caste system, say like in Australia, where, you know, if you're not a full time worker from when you finish school, you're going to be at an immediate financial disadvantage and then you will just be stuck on the back foot kind of a thing. Like, Mm. or you're, or like it's a caste system in terms of like, it's a financial one in a way. Like if you're in disability support or something, you're going to be fucking broke as fuck. Like, and, and you know, it's, it is kind of yeah. that idea that, as you were saying, it's like you take an idea from now and you kind of move it just a little bit further on down the line. And then, yeah, we have dystopia. Well, this this is from another novel that I read recently. Sorry, this mm. this is this this triggered my sesapine. Um, <laughs> um, so it's uh, from Clara and the Sun, which is by Kazuo Ishiguro, um, and it was really cool because it was told from the point of view of an AI being. Um, so I'll just give you a little background and then tell you why I thought of it. Um, So the main character, Clara, is a solar-powered artificial friend and she's selected by the sickly child called Josie. Um, And the the fact that children need artificial friends should trigger you because (laughs) and set you off that this is like a dystopia because like they do all their learning online and all of that and they have like one organized social thing a month where they just all gather with their artificial friends. It's fucking weird. But children, (laughs) some children are genetically engineered, which is called lifting, um, which gives them enhanced academic abilities and stuff. And Hmm. this process carries some risks. So Josie's really sick is because she's been lifted and it actually killed her older sister. And then she has, you know, like a friend in the novels who hasn't been lifted because he's poor. So even though he's, a smart kid and stuff and would probably benefit from being lifted his family can't afford to lift him so he's going to have a menial job for the rest of his life because he doesn't have the wealth to do the process to give him the academic prowess to send him to university and so on and so forth so it's like yeah and it's just that like the financial caste system is still a thing. Like it's still predetermined. Mm. Like he's no, never going to go on to be a doctor because he's not going to be smart enough to compete with the lifted kids and so on and so forth. So it's like, yeah. <laughs> um, it's a, but yeah. It's the same sort of thing in uh, as a Gattaca, even like it's technically <gasps> not a dystopia as such, but it is in, in certain ways. It kind of, I guess it's not like the, the dramatic destroyed dystopia that we think of, but it is, I find it is it in a different way. Very unsettling though. Don't you like Gattaca mm. is such an unsettling concept. First time I watched it was in high school when we first learned about genetics and <laughs> clearly my teachers, <laughs> I went to a very hippie school <laughs> for 20. Um, so Gattaca is really interesting though, because what they do in Gattaca is like they do genetic selection sort of like, and you know, you can manipulate genes and whatnot, but we are already doing pre-genetic screenings on babies. So when Mm. you're in utero, um, it used to be standard where they just test you for a few things and now they can test you for a buttload more. They can even figure out what your kid's going to look like. Um, you know, like, so, um, like when I was in utero, um, they incorrectly diagnosed me with having spina bifida, um, because I do have a like malformed spine, but that's probably where it started and then failed. But like, like this pre-genetic testing that we have is already 
lending itself to that Gattaca future? Because, I mean, is, is it going to be in 15 years' time, like, parent, like, pre-genetic testing is going to be to the point where parents get pregnant and, you know, they might have a child with spina bifida, cystic fibrosis, <laughs> something like that, and they choose not to have it because I know that that already mm. happens. Is that going to yeah. be something? Like, if you do IVF, that's something. But, like, if it's for... Is that going to be for everyone? Probably. Like and the yeah, and like they said in in Gattaca, it's like it is that sort of, you know, they what's that what's that line? It's just like, you know, they're still you, they're just the best of you. And it's like that's such a creepy way of looking, but that's how they justified <laughs> in the film. Yeah. And it's like Oh, and there's just something about it that's like it just uh, it just makes me so and that's I mean that's like in Brave New World. I mean, they don't go too much into like genetic stuff there, but it's definitely a thing because they IVF produce all the babies. Mm. Um in, in the in the citizens, like citizens of the society, you know, not like not the savages. Um they all the babies are made in like artificial wombs, they call it, which is pretty revolutionary because I don't know how how well IVF was going at the time that they were talking about. But the fact <laughs> they could just grow babies in a factory and but then everyone again went to assigned classes in society. So like the dumber people went to the more menial jobs and the smarter people. Oh, oh hey boys. Um better <laughs> jobs. Um sorry, my cat's just joined me. Um so yeah, it's like I don't I just Oh, it, yeah, it's just, it just just fucking gets me. Like, um, and I mean, Brave New World, let's be real. That is, uh, there are definitely some strong parallels with modern society and Brave New World. Oh, 100%. 100%. Yeah. But, but I mean, there, there is so many parallels and so many things. Like, um, obviously, we were talking in an episode just past about how, like, the metaverse has crashed and failed. But, like... <laughs> Like Ready Player One's a great example of what, because because eventually someone's going to find a way to make it work, and for us to all live online. And Ready Player One kind of seems like the way it's going to be. Like that just sort of makes the most sense. Like if you haven't read the book or read the film, it's basically like everyone, like they they the the poor people live in these they they're called the stacks, and it's literally just stacks of fucking caravans, stacks and on stacks on stacks. RVs. And everyone's just connected to the internet. Everyone lives online in this place called the Oasis. And it's, you know, there's these, you know, there's evil people who are trying to take over, the, you know, the, the Oasis and blah, blah, blah. But it is very much like, I, f I feel like that's the way that we're going to go when the metaverse finds a way to not suck, suck so much. <laughs> <laughs> so the biggest limiting factor to us stepping into the future mm. is the metaverse. Um, but Oh yeah, just like the 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 money element is just like ugh, ugh. Mm. so that's why the revolution kids. Yeah, I mean that that's always the way. Like you know, because because I, I mean you wouldn't say that Star Trek is a dystopia. Like Star Trek is a future film. Like obviously there's you know there'd, there'd be dystopian elements, but people don't think about the Star Trek future as a dystopian future, and that's like a moneyless, cashless exploring society. Yeah. You know? So may, maybe it is. Money I mean, if it's moneyless and cashless. Who decides who does the shit jobs? It's a fair question. I because don't. I, people I don't. that there's, there's there's going to be jobs out there that people don't want to do. So someone's going to. Um, have to it's do it's them. all it's it's got to be the dumb people. That's just what they. Gonna... <laughs> you know what will be really fun if you clean this toilet. Oh really? I don't. I don't so know. I mean, <laughs> in that case, then, like, to, if whether it's dystopia or utopia, as people see it, that means people still being assigned to jobs. So it's true. really just depends whose lens you're looking at it from, doesn't it? That is very, very true. Because money or not, like a money isn't the be all end all. If anything, I feel like if there's no money, there's more people being assigned jobs that they don't want to do because things have to be done. Oh well, think. I think the questioning thing is definitely like a big thing there because, like, you know, everyone say in Brave New World or in 1984 appears quite content you know they go about mm. their business etc cetera, etc cetera. um even like the handmaid's tale like the people i mean who aren't the handmaids yeah. you know they <laughs> they're, they're living a pretty good life um and i think the the way that like this is for dystopian fiction and i guess for some dystopian movies and stuff it's someone there is questioning stuff someone's going yeah. 
why? I'm like, why? Why? Sh- why? And and then they start seeing the flaws in society and stuff. And like, um, you know, um, and they often, I mean, dystopian novels often have very unhappy endings. That's also a <laughs> common trait. <laughs> um, yeah. So, okay. So I haven't seen Judge Dredd. So <laughs> can someone run me through that? Is it a game? Did I just Great. be a dumb dumb? Uh, it's a- it's a comic book. Like I, I've only seen the movie. I haven't seen the like the original movie. I've only seen the Carl Urban version. But it's basically oh, like, Carl like, Urban. Okay, yeah. the Carl Urban one is much closer to the 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 Sylvester Stallone one. You don't need to watch. See, I've what I've heard is that Sylvester Stallone's Judge is more like the comic book, but the world in the new series, the new movie is more like the comic book. Ah. yes and no like yeah yes and no i i think carl urban's version's closer yeah um like yeah Ju- judge dread the original one has some good parts to it but yeah you you can go off the the new one and you you probably in my opinion you're close to the comic books yeah so it's basically just like a world where there's um you know people living in towers and stuff like that in in the in the movie is that we're talking about what was it 2012 or something i can't remember um yeah. There's essentially there's some drug dealers selling some stuff in a, a tower and they run this tower, but everything's all connected up to the states. Um, like they've got like a security system connected to the state, state and everything like that. And basically, these judges are allowed to decide whether you could die or not. Like obviously, you'd probably know more than I would, Josh, but that's <laughs> from my my COVID I mean, memory at the moment. My, my COVID I mean, that's, memory. <laughs> It's basically it. Like, yeah, like, like there are, there, I think there are three mega cities in the USA and like one's the entire East coast of the USA. Um, and yeah, and people kind of live in these, these massive tower blocks, which, um, and yeah, so the crime got so out of hand that they created the judges and the judges were judged jury and executioner. So they could like judge robots. No, they're people. Yeah. They're, they're people. They're just like brutal cops who like yeah just like we'll just summary execute people on the spot and that's just sort of that's fine um damn but, yeah and so yeah like people will take over these big hab blocks and it has i was watching this amazing amazing video of a a canadian girl that i've just absolutely fucking fallen in love with called Demi is it me Lee. <laughs> i don't think you're canadian but <laughs> could be <laughs> Unless- Unless we're about to learn something new here, um, I'm not. No, I'm not nice enough. Let's be real. <laughs> <laughs> in the show notes, I'll post a link to this video, which is a. It's it's it, the video is called Mega Cities: Reality or Fiction, and she looks at three kind of mega cities of the future. So she looks at the future of Judge Dredd, of the Fifth Element, and of Minority Report. But yeah, in in the Judge Dredd one, she goes into how like the big like hab blocks, the big massive like you know hive tower things that people live in. They actually trialed this architecture in Johannesburg, um, and yeah, just it turned into this massive slum. Like the drug dealers took it over. Like it, it like it had a lot isn't, of parallels. Isn't that the movie where all the bugs come? <laughs> I mean, no, that's bug aliens. District nine. <laughs> district, district nine. <laughs> same gonna, place, different okay. thing. Um, <laughs> same city. Yeah, same city. Um, same same. <laughs> but you know, like, like I, I think I have to go back on what I said earlier, though. It's still good to watch the Sylvester Stallone uh, version of Judge Dredd because there are some amazing one-liners in it. Like, it's a very 90s action film. Yeah. And yeah. Well, and I, just, I just remember there's, like, <laughs> there's one part where he's in an apartment building and, and there's, like, he's he's trying to find these, like, you know, these dudes that are, like, fucking shooting up the place, having a block wall. And down this hallway, coming the other way is this, like, this robot, thing as like like that's serving food and like it's like so, it's, sorry i was just i was just imagining a roomba I don't it, know basically lo- <laughs> it basically looks like a roomba you're not wrong like it's not like an android or anything like that like it's literally like a little cart that's coming down but it has this voice coming out of it that's just like eat recycled food it's good for the environment and okay for you and so, <laughs> like, i think of that like Soil there's so green. many there's so many good lines in it, like like fucking Sylvester Stallone, be like, "I am the law. like it." Uh, <laughs> I am the law. Fuck, I need to go back and watch both of those Judge Dredd films now because they they are both great. Yeah, I I per- I think nerds would probably you know have a bit of an argument about that. I think the Carl Urban one's closer to the graphic novels, but the Sylvester Stallone one does have some very fun parts. Fun, could argue for <laughs> different merits. Um, so <laughs> so in. 
all the dystopian universes, futures, whatever you want to fucking call them that we've seen. Hmm. Generic. What are the what are the, what are the indicators? What are the generic things that we see across them? So we're talking the, the human towers, the, the human yeah. t- the caravan, no, the pile piles of people living high rises. Yeah, well, that's the one. <laughs> I found uh, yeah the the, the fun the, the five characteristics um, <laughs> and. It's it's interesting because it led me to a very very good kind of summary. Um, so the the five characteristics apparently of dystopian fiction are environmental destruction, obvious, mm-hmm. uh, governmental control, but it's either gov- like like oppressive government control or the government doesn't exist. So it's either one or the other. It's not really like we kind of you know say in the middle and it feels. Are they saying like anarchy is not going to work? How fucking rude! Right? <laughs> Who would have uh, thunk? <laughs> the loss of individualism survival mm. and technological control which is sort of like though those are the kind of five points of dystopias yeah uh, according to this article that i was reading but i want to i want to use those five points to uh prove that something very very popular in our timeline in our current time proves that we are uh currently living in a dystopia so we think about right. <laughs> we think about environmental destruction in mm-hmm. terms of online dating apps online dating apps have destroyed the normal places that you would go and like pick up people like as everyone a just goes online now person yes as a, yeah it's it's harder to go and pick people up in the real world because we've lost those techniques because we have the app i can't government, be like talking to people on apps jesus all right, right. government control technically like it's a bit of both like you need like you need like a government id to have you know the fuck your fucking phone to be able to get on the app so there is a technical form of government control but it's also a bit of anarchy Uh, out there not if you're on aldi prepaid apparently not if you're on aldi prepaid (laughs) um but yeah there's also there's like I'd say it's quite the opposite and be like, there is no sort of governance when it comes to dating apps whatsoever. It is literally just anarchy, everyone for themselves. Loss of individualism. Obviously, everyone just starts to look the same. After you just swipe for a while, it's just like, yeah, yeah you're all the same Oh, my person. God. And like, everyone has the same answers. On, everyone you know, has like on, exactly on Hinge, answers. like, yep. I'll fall for you if you push me, winky yeah. face. Yeah. Fuck One is- thing. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, people are like believe it or not, I've never seen an episode of Game of Thrones. Like, cool man, whatever. You're like, oh um, wow, I don't get it. <laughs> uh, survival, and it's you know because we we consider relationships like a strong part of survival. Like even among spurgs like us who don't really need relationships like most human beings, it really kind of it's sort of that double edged sword when it comes to dating apps. It's sort of like you know mm. the it, it lessens the value of a lot of relationships because we feel like there's just there's more options out there. So it kind of diminishes the idea of connections and it diminishes the idea of fucking like, like creating something really strong because we can always just swipe and find someone new and you know, technological control where like we are fed humans via an algorithm. Like that's just sort of creepy in itself. And so yeah. that, so welcome to my TED talk. Thank you for coming. We know what you like. Yeah. Yeah. This um, is, hey, this is me. Josh, Josh and Amy, we reckon we, you are best match for each other. And like yeah. they fucking give you a notification. You're like, oh, yeah. yeah, exactly. And then you look at it and it's never like, yeah, it's like, like picked for you. Thanks, Tinder. None of these people look interesting whatsoever. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to use those five points and say that we are living in a dystopia because of dating apps. All right. Um, I've got I've got some other arguments for uh, why why we might be living in a dystopia. Um, irreversible damage to the climate. Yeah. Um, in terms of governmental control, yeah. <laughs> um, have you heard of China? Um, yep. Heard of North yep. Korea? Yep. Heard of Turkmenistan? I mean, <laughs> um, I mean hell, where well, I mean we're technically controlled by the government, who are controlled by the monies behind them as well. So it's like, exactly, yeah, it's, but you know, it's, like it's places such a lot over here, but it's the same thing. Yeah, but places like China, North Korea, Turkmenistan. If you haven't, Myanmar. if yeah, Myanmar. If you haven't heard about Turkmenistan's wild ex president, um, he's dead yeah. now, but he's worth finding out about. There's a reason why he's got giant gold statues of him all over the place, but um, <laughs> they are still technically living under an authoritarian dictatorship. Um, I but, if you go there, they only like take you out like two streets. Sorry, yeah, but they, they do like the North Korea tour where they go, yeah. look at this one nice building we have and look at this nice piece of grass. And you're like, oh, yeah, all right, what, what else? I can't remember if it was actually a Top Gear episode or if it was a Anthony Bourdain episode, but they, they went there and it was yeah, very interesting about what they were allowed to do, where they were allowed to go with cameras 
uh, yeah. what they had to say they were there for. Is, pretty, is this is crazy. that not just 1984? Because I know yeah. 1984 is all about the government is watching you, and that's like what everyone takes away from it. The more unsettling things are all the like the new words like thought crime, double speak, like mm. all of these things, which we're always coming up with new words as a society, right? New vernaculars mm. and stuff mm. like that. And then there's all these ministries which are in charge of like rewriting histories. Um, North Korea does that. North Korea lies about shit all the time. Um, anyway, <laughs> and okay, then we've also got um, so a lot of a lot of post apocalyptic societies um, exist as a result of like I think 1984 is one or is it Brave New World? It's one of the two exists because of constant rebellion, civil wars, uprisings, all of that, and that's what's made. You know, that's what led to a totalitarian government coming into place, which has led to the current dystopia. Um, do we not have impending probably a civil war in America at some point? Shit's going to hit the mm. fan, I reckon. That place mm. is, I think, American Civil War 2.0. It's literally just going to be the same thing, like <laughs> race racism. <laughs> um, yeah. And then also, like, you know, Russia. Um they were just testing out their border defense missile system the other day, which I do not love. Don't don't watch it. Not good. Nope. Um, and, yeah, so all of these things like, you know, political tensions and climaxes, not great. Uh, what else is there? Um, I think the poverty cycle that I was talking about is absolutely a thing. And then you have, you know, where you get stuck in a poverty cycle where you're living paycheck to paycheck and you have to work to survive because you're stuck in capitalism which you didn't elect to join and you know if like it's just and especially like for people who are neurodivergent and stuff it really impacts their ability to study as well when they're at school and whatnot mm. which might minimize their chances of getting into universities um which might minimize their job opportunities in the future which is like there is no correlation between getting a great job and going to uni but like come on y'all like you know, late stage diagnosis can have a really big impact on people's lives. Um, and also people are still working five days a week and struggling to get by. And then other countries are trailing four day work weeks and getting universal basic income. And it's like, <laughs> is there going to be, I'm just, I'm yeah. So um, anyway, what, what would be for you boys? Let me change the topic. I'll just start ranting. What would be, your what would be something in your personal dystopia if you, like what would be just the thing that makes you go I'm going to be the rebellious main character in this story and probably end up hanging myself in a windmill or lighthouse or something um <laughs> like what would it be any shopping center the hour <laughs> in I, I it doesn't the, matter I read a really good short story once by Nick Earls who's a Brisbane author but it's about a shopping center that never ends it goes on infinitely it's like an Oof. infinite shopping center. It was haunting. Yeah. Grant, like, Grant, let's, Grant, let's extrapolate though. Like, like tell, I, tell us. About I hate. Your, I hate Batman. shopping. I hate going to the shops and not having a clear goal. Or I don't understand anyone that can go to the shops and just walk around and look at things for ages. Uh, oh, it, supermarkets. Are I, I can't do it. It just if if I go there, I feel like I have to know what I want. I, Otherwise, I'm generally a very unhappy person. It takes a lot <laughs> for me to uh, to overcome that. Just be like, you're just a person working walking through the shops like anyone else. Like, it just makes me. It really puts a dent in my day. And, <laughs> and Christmas shopping's coming up, so woohoo! Bless <laughs> up for the internet. Both. Um. Both. I mean, my like, yeah, I think like same same as you, Grant. I think my my personal dystopian hell exists and it's a nine to five in a cubicle. Like I, I can't mm. think of anything worse. I don't know how people do that for like, I, I would lose my mind in a day, let alone people that do it for years and years and years and years. And five years. days, like, five days a week for yeah. 50 years. Yeah. Like I look, I have an office job. I don't have a cubicle. We do hot desking, but um, I think because I have so much other stuff going on in my life, it's bearable. Like it's not mm. like it isn't the thing that defines me or anything like, but, and it's, you know, it's kind of fun to play pretend <laughs> <laughs> and I show up and like, but yeah, like, I don't know. I do like a lot of faffing about and just talking to people and I don't know. I don't really, I don't know. 
just, I, I have no idea what I do yeah. at work. Don't tell my boss, please. I mean, yeah, Sam, I've, if you're listening, I love working where I work and I do lots. Like I, I've only ever worked like an actual nine to five for four weeks in my entire life. Like I worked in retail, I worked in hospital. So it was like always broken hours and stuff like that. Yeah. And then obviously like I've done radio, I've done my own stuff. And so I, yeah, I, I did four weeks working at the radio station that I work for, like, like doing uh, some stuff with Triple J. The, and the mystery radio station. The mystery Joshua radio station for. that I work for. <laughs> yeah. And I, I like, yeah, I, I, I did like a nine to five helping out with moderating for Unearth. And like I'd get to Friday and I'd be so just run down that I just wouldn't want to do anything for the weekend. The next thing I knew it was Sunday. And then it just kind of like it became like in just four weeks, it became rinse and repeat. And I like, I was miserable and that was like, mm. like a, that was at a fun job as well with like people that i enjoy and like wearing like what like you know a hoodie and jeans like if i had to wear a suit as well like that's no absolutely i think we should start not. presenting the podcast in suits um, <laughs> i think yeah like working a nine to five office job for the rest of my life like that being my career you know like mm. Like I couldn't do that. Like that that's always been a nightmare for me. Um, but I think what would be really scary, another one that scares me is assigned car systems. I hate that, like taking away mm. freedom of choice. And on the freedom of choice note, um, like anything where creativity is stifled or banned or inhibited, like you have being assigned the role of janitor, you cannot create music you can only listen to government approved music triple j <laughs> um, you can only listen like, to toilet bowls yeah like you know you can only listen to people music or whatever it's called you know like that that would just be oh my god i i got i got an uber the other day and it was like a 40 minute ride and the person had fox fm on and they played one song in 40 minutes Jesus. i was like I was going fucking insane in the back seat. I put my earplugs in because I was like, I just need to dull the idiocy. It's like idiocracy. Now that is a good idiocracy. dystopian future. That is, um, yeah. All the crops are dying because they're watering with Gatorade. <laughs> <laughs> just, yeah. Well, I mean, um, a lot of a lot of that. I mean, that's, I think that's the really depressing thing about a lot of just like dystopian stuff from you know, like the eighties and nineties is they're like, they're like, Oh, this is, you know, this is very full on and ridiculous and stuff like that. But like so much of it's come true. Like yeah. so oh, much of it. Hey, I'm time, yet like, with my toilet stuff, couch. Yeah. A lot of that stuff is invented because people saw it there as well though. So like, they're also kind of, they've, they've, They've given birth to the idea and also doomed the world with it because it probably wouldn't have happened if they never bought it to us. You know, like most, most like, you know, I think we didn't we do an episode on like, you know, did science fiction come before the, uh, like the other idea, for example, like holograms and stuff like that. Like that was just. No, like, we I'm, haven't, but that's a fucking sick topic. Oh, uh, I thought we did do that for a topic of. Uh, Maybe I just dreamt about it. Yeah, cool. Grant's, topic, in, a, Grant's in a COVID fever dream. Right <laughs> yeah, yeah. <now. laughs> but like, um, even, yeah, like the stuff like these towers with their child in, in Jayberg, like that's going to, like, that only exists because they probably saw it a fucking Robocop. And they're like, you know what? Let's let's do that. You know, like some, some company somewhere is like, oh, that's going to save us heaps of money. You know, we can rent out the maximum amount of rooms, taking up the minimum amount of space. And then, that's that's how that it just propagates from there. It's, it's I think pretty crazy. people people being idiots is going to be the biggest thing that shapes our future and that determines whether we head towards a dystopia or towards an evolution of human society. You know, yeah. the people the people who don't question things, the people who say I'm expected to work a nine to five job, I'm expected to get married and buy a house and have some kids and then retire and so on and so forth. And I love going to shopping centers on the weekend. And then, oh my God, I love going to, <laughs> you know, it's the people who don't question things. The people who can listen to Fox FM that only plays one fucking song in 40 <laughs> minutes, who these are the people that are going to lead to society because you see at election time and stuff, like, especially in America, um, people are fucking it's like the, the the they're so malleable they're, and so many people are so incapable of critical thought that 
it's it's going to be so easy. Just all it takes is just one day, a few totalitarian laws get passed, the wrong people get elected. You know, some someone proposes some way to pull us out of a civil war, and the next thing you know, you're assigned a role. You have to take soma every day. I mean, I already do. It's called duloxetine. <laughs> Hi, um, but like, <laughs> it's just it's so close. Like it's so, Mm. it's so tangible and it's just, you gotta, you gotta think (laughs) we don't as good as toilet chairs sound like toilet armchairs sounds great, but no, let's, let's, let's go beyond. Let's just, it does sound pretty good. (laughs) Imagine being really hungover. You'd never have to, Oh, game changer. (laughs) No, I'd hate it. Come to think of it, there's so many reasons. Oh, I feel so. Unless I had a built-in bidet, I don't. Oh, look, nah. Like, take it back. No toilet chairs. We're anti-toilet chair here. (laughs) All right. So, so so maybe maybe we we kind of you know we we encompass this discussion by saying like, what's maybe one thing each? What's one thing that we hope? Maybe one thing that we hope humans do to sort of avert disaster. Like, if if you both had just one thing that you think, all right, if humans do this you know, maybe they'll be less in trouble. What would it be? Well, in my mind, unfortunately, there's only one way that we get out of this and there's too many fucking people. That's it. No matter, oh. we could, you can, all these ideas, you can change something, but the fact that there's just too many people that it just pushes you into this dystopian stuff. How, how have we, it. how did I not bring this up? There's been a fucking plague. That's a <laughs> yeah. sign we're in a fucking dystopian nightmare, but it didn't right. work. <laughs> um, so we need a stronger plague is what you're saying. <laughs> a better plague. A better. Um, is that uh, line from the office that like, was like funny for a long time. Dwight was like walking Dwight. to the gym and he's just like, we need a new plague. <laughs> and then we had one and it was a bad time. And now again, we're just thinking, we need a new plague. <laughs> yeah, oh, I'm, not, I'm not saying it's good for people, but no. if for the world to get, like I guess, livability wise better, it can't happen good to, like, there's just so or, many or, people. Or like a Thanos yeah, moment just and just... Nap- Random, draw, draw a ballot. Um, <laughs> just, yep, that's the way to go. Look, I, I don't know if I could choose between dismantling capitalism or saving the environment, but I like to think that they're hand in hand. So, mm. fucking But even then, you still there's still all the people there and they have to, you have to do something with it. Like, there's, you still, there's going to have to be food made to feed the people, whether it's Soil capitalistic green. or Soil if it's... Green. Or if it's uh, like a socialist society, those people still need to be fed, which means things are still going to be, you know, a, a burden on the environment. It's the See, people my, that are the problem. My personal utopia is uh, North Korea where they just give you free <laughs> methamphetamine so that you work harder and you're less hungry. And uh <laughs> shouldn't joke about that. But uh, 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 yeah. I'm, I'm, I tell you, I'm going to butt in with a much lighter note about what I think people should do. Because I, I, I was thinking about like, I think the main reason why we – we're in that sort of, you know, the the, you know, the the tipping point of the dystopian societies is because I think we've we've become too reliant on systems. You know, like like most people don't know how to use their hands for anything. You know, don't know how to, and you know, and I'm guilty of a lot of it too. Don't know how to grow food. Don't know how to make food. Don't know how to cook food. Like, don't know how to build or repair things for themselves because we're in this like sort oh, of. Oh, you like didn't grow up on a farm, did you? Fast food replacement society. Yeah, I did. So speak for yourself, mate. Yeah, yeah I speak did. for yourself. I can I can use a fucking power tool. I'm good to go. <laughs> I don't know. I don't mean everyone on this podcast. Hey, I've I've built half the furniture in this house. Like I've See, I built you we can do a... things with your hands. I know that's what I'm saying is like people as a general statement. Because uh, I've got yeah. I've like got a huge veggie patch in my backyard. I fucking love to cook. I've learned a lot about growing vegetables over the last couple of years. But I think this is where like where we're gonna be in a lot of trouble is like, yeah, if the fucking internet just clicked off tomorrow the fucking power went out and didn't come back on like so many people aren't gonna know what to do and i I think like that's that's what people need to do is just like just for yourself just like learn yeah learn the basics of growing food and making bread and you'll be like you'll instantly be a million times ahead of so many people who just don't know these things bugs are a good source of protein 
that's my apocalypse survival tip. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> yeah, absolutely not. Like, no, thank you. But uh, well, they they think that's the um that's the fu- food of the future because it's going to be the only thing that is mm. like, create that um big like is plentiful enough and grows fast enough that it can sustain us is going to be insects because you know like if, if you you know eating animals you have to make there's there's going to be an intricate section where there's it either going to be enough room for the animals on the planet or to feed the people or not like. Or if you're growing food, there's only going to be so much room to grow food to feed the people. So I think the insects is the future of what's going to have to sustain us going forward. Insects so is the future of our food. I like it. That's, cause, well, cause, yeah, that's that's, 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 that's what I'm thought. at. I'm, I'm, that's like, that's, that's <laughs> the defining Josh, line to Josh, me. Josh, we're, we're vegans. We're fine. Yeah. We'll, we'll just fucking eat some grass. It's <laughs> sweet. Grass, we're fine. Yeah. Yeah. If there's no vegetation <laughs> and, it's, and it's just bugs though, like it's not even about being vegan at that stage. I just don't want to eat bugs. I really don't. I'd rather eat dirt than I would eat bugs. <laughs> like, 100%. The nice gritty texture. Mm. Probably the same, <laughs> to be honest. Probably. <laughs> Probably. Uh, and that leads us to our final question. Would you rather eat <laughs> dirt or bugs? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we'll we'll save that final beat for another day, Marky. We will. But uh, uh, as well as the main topic this week, though, Marky, you did choose the uh, the final beat, which I think we'll move into now on that very very wholesome. Don't hate me. Delightful and delicious note. Um, and so it's it's another episode of One Has to Go. We've uh, we, we've done a couple of these now, and they've always been a uh, fun and uh, and you know, creating a bit of con- controversy, as they like to say. Controversy, um, right? <laughs> Graham Hancock. Controversy. Controversy. <laughs> Fuck, I love Graham Hancock so much. Uh, go watch Ancient Apocalypse. It's fucking phenomenal. Um, but uh, all right, one has to go. And the one that has to go this week, Jurassic Park or Star Wars? Grant, let's start with you. Jurassic Park or Star Wars, which one has to go? Uh, for me personally, growing it up. It never existed. A big Star Wars boy has got to be Jurassic Park. That's uh, I could definitely... I I've I've don't even think I've seen the second one, to be honest. So <laughs> it's it's fine. I can live without it, you know. But you know, getting me through my COVID this week has been andor. It's been really good. So I think I need yeah. that Star Wars. I need it in my life. You know, everything I love is sci fi. You know, I've got a dinosaur magic deck that might not exist without Jurassic Park, who knows? <laughs> but um Jurassic yeah, Park pa- did invent dinosaurs. That is a yeah, well-known exactly. fact. Yeah, mm. yeah. Christians hate them with one simple trick. Um, <laughs> 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 How about you, Margie? What, what's your choice? Oh, I was a big Jurassic Park nerd when I was a kid. I thought it was the scariest movie ever, but so good. And I thought peak comedy was when the guy was on the toilet and the T-Rex <laughs> ate the toilet. And we'd, and I thought it was so funny because the T-Rex ate yeah. his poop. Because um, <laughs> I've always found <laughs> poop jokes funny. Um, and like Jurassic Park PJs, quilt cover, all of it. But I, I, I would not be who I am now without Star Wars, though, because, you know, ran around playing it with my cousin and my brother, and it was, yeah, it, it was just so influential. And then, oh, and just the universe that's around it, like, it, it's just such a big part of my life. And, mm-hmm. yeah, no, nah, sorry, Jurassic Park. I love dinosaurs, but you're going to have less paleontologists as a result, but uh, gotta got to go Jurassic Park. <laughs> <laughs> Josh? It's, I mean, this is a hard, because I mean, to me, the obvious qu- answer should be Star Wars. It should be. But yeah. if, if I think about the emotional response that I get from watching those two films, like I just, I like watching Star Wars films two. because um, like, there are a lot more than two Jurassic Park films and I have seen all of them. <laughs> no, I've seen all of them a, a number of times. No, no, but if, if like, if I like hold like a new hope versus Jurassic park one is like the emotional response kind of thing. Or, or like, or like any of them kind of thing. But like, yeah, I e- even now watching Jurassic park when the fuck, when they see the dinosaurs for the first time and Sam Neill's fucking character, like gets up and like takes <laughs> off his glasses and shakes. Like, like I still get fucking goosebumps from that. And it's have like, you seen, have you seen the bad melodica me? cover of it? I have. And it's amazing. <laughs> I have. And so like, it's really hard for me to say Jurassic Park has to go 
because of the emotional response that I get from that film that I don't get from any of the Star Wars films. Like I really, I love the Star Wars films. They're probably my favorite things of all time, but it's really hard for me to say Jurassic Park has to go when I probably have more of an emotional attachment to Jurassic Park. And I don't know if I just want to be contrarian because you two have both said Star Wars and now just say Jurassic Park. You contrarian? Right, I know. I think I think Jurassic Park just just has to go, but it's that's a very hard thing for me to say because I have a very strong emotional connection to it, Jurassic. Park. I I tried to write this one to be a difficult one, and it's, it hurts. Like, I mean, my parents still have my T Rex toy from when I was a kid. <laughs> um, it actually lives in their garden. It's lasted very well, and like, yeah, it's just. Uh, yeah, now there's time for the future. I I had Jurassic Park. <laughs> I had Jurassic Park bath towel, uh, face washer, cup, plates, bowl. Oh yeah. Um, my this PJs is insane are because good. you you guys both hate capitalism so much, but you, you wouldn't be able to tell by the all the virtue you guys talk about. <laughs> I, was, I was like, I was five at the time. I didn't know what capitalism was. Yeah, I see the smile on your face talking about it though. Hey, it's it's nostalgia. I have nostalgia yeah. attached. Can someone to please them. get me Jurassic Park pajamas again? I will wear them when we record the show. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I had like a whole like bedspread of Jurassic Park. Same. Too, it was fucking correctly. sick. Like, yeah. It sounds like um, Steven Spielberg just had your credit card number. To be honest. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I did have a credit card at age five. Yes. <laughs> they still won't let me have Spielberg? one. Spielberg. I can't even remember. Yeah, it was Spielberg. It was Spielberg. Yeah. Uh, but dear listener, we need to know uh if you had to get rid of one of jurassic park or star wars which one would it be every friday on the north side nerds instagram and tiktok uh i put the question out there we've been getting like 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 some some really really great comments across them now like you know it's it's, yeah. it's starting to become more of a thing the more we kind of post about them i've like i had a friend send me like an essay as a text uh the other day that oh I, I i've i haven't replied to yet because it's such a good essay that i just i need a moment to sit with it but about why <laughs> the why the third eye is the obvious winner over the uh the third arm um Ooh. but uh yeah so Can't you can go back Go back through the Northside Nerds Instagram and you can see all our Friday questions or on TikTok as well. I post them all there and you can like leave your thoughts among all of them. But yeah, just follow at Northside Nerds on Instagram, on TikTok. Start a I, fight with someone. You know what? Start a fight. Yeah. Start it's a fight with someone. 2022. Why not? I've been um, saying this yeah. too many of us. Yeah. And finish a fight with someone. <laughs> <laughs> and if you can't choose, you have to Photoshop Dudley or Chucky into a uh, still from Jurassic Park or Star Wars. That's, that's the rule. It's just, just the rule. But you can't call it Jurassic Park because I'll cry because of Futurama. And that, and that wouldn't exist if we got rid of Jurassic Park. So maybe that's an just, argument to get rid of it. It is a good episode, though. It is it a is very sad. good. It is a very but good. It's a sad. It is so a sad. very, very good episode. Oh, why is life why so hard? Would, why are we so real, sad today? This has been Jeez, a very we're all, sad podcast. This has been a real downer episode. I hope you guys all enjoyed listening to us being fucking sad sacks. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! Uh, well, we hope that next week is going to be happier. Well... Like and subscribe. You can leave us <laughs> reviews uh, on uh, Apple Podcasts. Only on good reviews, please. Spotify Podcasts. You can leave comments on YouTube, wherever you're listening to uh, Northside Nerds. Tell your friends, uh, tag Tell us your in your stories. Tell your mum. Don't, don't turn d- this world oh. into a dystopian future. Oh, geez. I think we all have one brain cell between us. <laughs> don't. <laughs> don't. Listen to the whole podcast and you give us less than four stars. You're part of the dystopia. Why would you even yeah. put oh, up with us for this long? <laughs> truth bombs. <laughs>